I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. The voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Hey everybody, Lady Cheryl here, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to share some firsts with you guys. Actually, it's going to be the first time that I've grown something, or the first time something has appeared in the season or the year. And I'm also going to show you a sore spot in my food forest. I've been telling you guys that I had a lot of cleaning up to do. We started it. We did. Brian and Bria started last week. We gave a lot of things away, some things we threw away. And today we're going to finish up that sore spot, okay? All right. Thanks for dropping in. I hope you stay for the whole video. And I hope you like and subscribe to my channel. All right, let's get started. Cut a mulberry tree, the more it will grow. So I'm not going to film the whole thing. If I were you, I would start in the center. That's perfect. We go across the same height. Yes, excellent. Wow, that looks wonderful. I see just a few little pieces I can uh, prune off. It's fantastic. First ripe black mulberries. This is from the tree that I sent hundreds of cuttings to people. I will be having my breakfast out here in the food forest every morning. Now these berries are small, but they are super sweet. The blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. There are a lot of them right in here. They are delicious. So I'm going to step back and slowly pan up so that you can see how beautifully my youngest son Andre, prune this tree. The more you prune mulberries, the more they will produce. Now at the bottom of the tree, you can see I'm growing Russian Blocking 14 Comfrey. So what I'm actually growing is living fertilizer. And every few months, I'll just come in here and chop down the mature leaves and just let it naturally decay and fertilize the tree. And what you're seeing in the frame right here are just some sticks that I'm gonna make a hugel culture bed. Um, I'm gonna chip these all up. Okay, living fertilizer planted next to my wild mulberry tree. Here's another first for the season. These are my sugar baby watermelons. And you guys saw the video how I planted them and the seeds move because you get a lot of rain, a lot of wind, and the seeds will move to where they wanna be. But at this stage, after they get a little bit bigger, I can strategically place them where I want them. And when I do that, I'll come back and show you how I do it in a video. Okay, now over here is my Minnesota midget cantaloupe. And they're probably, they space pretty good. I'm just hope a couple more come up right here. If it doesn't, I'll move one of these here and put right in here. 
okay? And like I said, I'll come back and show you how I do that. Here's another first of the season. Our first sunflower. Isn't it pretty? Yep, I started those seeds in the house probably February. And we're going to have more to grow. The jujube tree is about 20 feet tall. I want to cut it down. And because uh, we can't harvest it way up there. Wonderful. That is absolutely perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. So we got this is what my first jujube of the season look like. This will be the second year that this tree has produced jujubes. My son cut this tree down in half. It was approximately 20 feet high. It has a lot of thorns on the branches to protect it from predators. And if you look close, right there where my finger is, that's where he cut it off about 10 feet. This tree is only three years old. Uh, some people say you have to have a different type of uh, jujube to pollinate it. But the seller told me that I didn't and he was absolutely right. Because you can see that it is loaded. Now let me go closer and show you these thorns. They are very sharp, very pointy, very strong. So you can't climb this tree, the squirrels don't climb it uh, to get the fruit. But it will be covered with wasp and bees very soon. They go from branch to branch pollinating it and I'm so glad we cut it down because it had gotten so tall that we couldn't possibly harvest the fruit at the top of the tree okay so it's about 10 or 11 feet tall now also I just want to share with you right next to it people tell you to space the trees out so far apart but when you have an urban type of uh, backyard you could put things closer together than you think this is an elderberry tree again another wild tree that grows in Texas bought it from the same seller that I got the jujube tree from he said that I didn't need a pollinator he was absolutely right it produced elderberries last year and what I want to share with you a first is about this is it is now putting out small elderberry plants. So I'm gonna dig these up, this one, this one, and there's one right behind there. I'm gonna dig those up and strategically place them where I want them to be. A first for me, having fruit trees self-seed on their own. Here's another brown turkey fig tree that I told you guys I have on the east side of my food forest. And I'm training it to grow like a hedge. And here are the first, actually this might be the second, third, and fourth uh, fig of the season because it was a single fig on here, but I think a squirrel or something got it, unless I'm missing it. But, uh, yeah, we will have figs very soon. And just because I'm here, I wanna share with you right behind it is another uh, elderberry bush. They're not really trees, even though they grow hard wood. Uh, you'll start seeing blooms. It's gonna be some little white flowers, a cluster that will be pollinated and turn into berries very soon. I love, absolutely love elderberries. I sent a lot of these cuttings out. I sold some as well as gave many away. And I'm going to grow more elderberries because you guys know that it is very, very healthy for your immune system. I'm pretty sure I showed you this cucumber before when it was real little, but I want to show it to you now. This is, I think it's called Alpha Beta 
cucumber that doesn't have to cross pollinate between a male and a female flower. And this was um, donated to me by Pescatarian Gardener. I think I'm pronouncing her name right. I'll leave a link in the description box so you can check her channel out. Thank you so much. This is the first time I've grown icicle radish. These seeds were donated to me by At Home with Cherie, and I want to thank her. I'll leave a link to her channel in the description box. And here's some purslane. I just pick it up, growing in the wood chips, and put it anywhere I have a space. Also, these peppers, I think, I can't remember the name of them, but the seeds were also donated to me by At Home with Cherie, and this pepper as well. In fact, I think I have four or five different type of uh, new peppers varieties that I'm growing this year in my gratitude garden. And if you don't remember, or if you're new to my channel, my gratitude garden consists of anything that I've grown from seeds that were old or donated. And I'm just showing that I'm grateful. So everything that I'm showing you has been started with the seed. Here's a look at my tomatoes. Aren't they gorgeous? And they have a lot of blooms and a couple of tiny tomatoes, but they're all in the, it's kind of awkward. Let me say it this way. It's difficult for me to get inside of there. So I'll wait until some grow on the outer edges of the garden bed and then I'll show you. Now here's a look at my tomatoes when I first planted them out uh, in March. I don't do what everybody else do. I have a way to protect my tomatoes so I get an a early start on them, okay? I don't advise anybody to do this unless they have the meat to cover them. This is a part of my gratitude garden. A lot of these seeds were donated to me. And speaking of gratitude, I'm very grateful for everything that you see in this picture right here because all of that was either, either overwintered in the greenhouse or seeds that I started. My uh, purple cone flowers or echinacea is coming back with full force. I'm gonna see if I got save some uh, footage of how small they were when we outlined the bed before I dropped a lot of flower seeds in here. And I uh, do the no-till method and so this had a lot of wood chips. I just sprinkled some seeds, guys. And I'm sure those right there are zinnias. And I think these around in here are poppy. I just dropped a lot of old seeds that I had in this gratitude garden. Okay, bed. Over here in my food forest, right up under my mimosa trees are eggplants that I grew from seed. And I noticed the other day, the first flower, Isn't that pretty? We're gonna have eggplant soon, guys. Eggplant does better when it's warmer. So the warmer it gets in Texas, the more these eggplants are gonna grow. And one more thing I wanna show you, this apple tree, I believe it's an Anna. I thought it was a goner because it had uh, fire blight really bad. And I think I mentioned to you all, I was thinking about just ditching it. And when I say ditch it, I don't want to chip the wood up and if it had some type of disease and then spread it in the mulch. So anyway, I severely pruned it. It was about 10 feet tall and I have a little comfrey coming there. And right there at that graph line, you can see a little, uh, let me see if I can go closer. Right through my finger is I gotta get rid of that, and then that's just comfrey uh, that I just popped in there. Because eventually this will go into the ground, probably right where it is. Comfrey is growing like crazy, all in here, and then right over there, two pawpaw trees. I didn't mean to go do all of this, but a pawpaw tree there, a pawpaw tree there, and one here. Let me go over here and show you more. And I almost late, waited too late to get this spare because I'm going to take it off today because it's getting ready to turn into a fern. And this is where I transplanted the spare because that was in a half whiskey barrel. And um, this is where the spare because came up that was buried under a pile of wood chips. But those roots can grow 15 to 20 feet in the earth. And three years later, that spare because came back. But I, I missed this one. I'm going to... I gotta take all this down today because this is probably too hard to eat, but the one in the middle will be just right. 
but this country is growing back very, very well. Okay, now, you see over here in this chair, I'm going to maximize it some. That is a white Texas star hibiscus. Yep, this will be the second season. I planted the seeds there about four years ago. It took like two years and they just came up. So don't, you know, freak out when you put seeds in the ground. When they don't come up, they'll surprise you. Let me just say one thing about the country. The Russian blocking 14 country cannot be started with seeds. So even though this beautiful country plant will produce beautiful flowers, when those flowers drop, they do not uh, produce other comfrey. It must be started with the root. However, it attracts a lot of pollinators to the food forest because they feast on the nectar um, and pollen in the flowers. And you see it? I love when I see them because they're eating up bugs, okay? They don't eat the peaches. They just eat insects. There it is right there. Come on. Look in the camera and you'll follow it in the camera. So it doesn't eat the fruit. It will only eat the insects, okay? So they are our friends. Okay. The ladybug is on her job. She's eating aphids, okay? That's how you know you've got a organic food forest because all of the lizards and insects don't die because you're not spraying them. Hey, everybody. You all want to speak? Hi, everybody. What's your name? Maria. My name is Brian. Okay. This is our sore spot in the food forest. There's a pole right here. And this is what we're going to clean up today. This is the spot I hardly ever show. Those trees back there, I keep cutting them down. They are weed trees, and we're going to continue to cut them down. Brian and Bria are a big help to me. In another video, I'm going to share with you how I'm going to get rid of those weed tree roots once and, and so for all. All of this is going to be given away. We're going to donate a lot of these buckets. So we're going to clean all this up today, and then we're going to come back and show you. So we are working on the pathways. We put down cardboard to suppress weeds, which we don't see that many. And then Brian is going to take the shovel and he's going to spread it out. Bria just opened up another bag by herself. She opened up the first bag too. Very good, Brian. Position it. Overlap your cardboard, remember? Get your, get your wood chips out the way. Slide them over. Some more. Now let's put that there. Okay. Now, your wood chips. Pick some wood chips up and put them on top of the cardboard. You can just pick them up with your hand. Not under there, Brian, on the top of the cardboard, okay? Bria, you can come help. Pick big pieces up at a time. Like this? Yes. Just hurry up, sweetie. Good job. Now, Brian, you can take that other bag and spread it onto here. And Bria, you can spread all of that where that cardboard is. Very good. Pick the bag up and put it on the cardboard, son. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using bag mulch, guys, because it's cheaper for me. This mulch was on sale for $2 a bag at Lowe's, and I can get free wood chips, but I just don't have the strength to spread them, and by the time I pay somebody $100 to $125 to spread them, I can just buy mulch. So this is not going around my uh, trees or uh, plants, only in the pathways. Go ahead, babe. That's a lot. Yep. Okay, Brian, you want to move it this way. You can get the rake and do it, or you can do it with your hands. Thank you, Bria. Cover up all the cardboard. I'll come back when it's done, guys, because I need to get up and get the rake. Another thing we did, guys, was we shoveled a hole in here and where these wood chips were, and we put a banana plant here because they were multiplying real fast. Thank you, guys. Uh, did you use all of your water, Chewy? What are the other plants? Okay. Like where you're stepping in between. See right there? Yeah. Water inside of the bed, okay? 
Uh, don't don't I, let it come out so fast, Julie. You saw my water. Okay, you can go put it where you got it. What do I do now? Do I just go wait? put that where you got it? Thank you. Okay, Chewie, you can go put that where you got it. Here, did you put some water over here? Thank you. I'll go fill it up with rainwater. Okay, guys. Okay. So you can see we got it all cleaned out in here. And one day I'm going to have somebody just haul that shit away and they can have everything in it. And the kids cleaned up the area real good. It was a big pile of wood chips here. We see some, I don't know what that is, weed, mint, or whatever growing. But we're going to get that up. We cut the two trees down, the weed trees. I got a certain treatment I'm going to do for it. But I'm going to take my uh, reciprocating saw and cut it to the ground. And wow. Yeah, I did Where's this? Where, where, oh, man. Brian did really well. Cut all that down. Okay. I, broke, I didn't even use, like, the cutters. What did you do? I, I just stepped on it and stuff. And, um, uh, like, when I was stepping on it, I twisted it, and it started breaking. Okay. All right. Okay. So that was what I've been hiding in my food forest. And I am so, so thankful that my grandchildren helped me. What did you do, Chewie? Um, I, I picked up all these things right here and helped you out, out here. And I also moved uh, bags of soil back over there. Yeah, we got lit rid of a lot of junk. What did you do, Bria? You want to come closer? I picked up the trash. <laughs> right. And these guys are some potting tables I bought years ago. Uh, I'll probably end up throwing them away. Um, I'll ask a few people that I know they have gardens if they would like it. And I'm going to keep these totes right over here. And my boys drug my last two okra pots in the uh, terracotta color. And then I'm going to spread wood chips all along here. And we're going to be done. Okay, you all want to say goodbye? Bye, everybody. Thank you all for watching. But I want you off of there because I don't want you to get hurt, honey. Okay, I'm going to cut it down, guys. Okay. And I'll show them in a video how I'm going to treat it. Make it a better Thanks for place watching. Bye now. For you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying. If you care enough for the living, make a better place. For you and... For me.